Justin Cook. That's the guy that plays Yusuke. Yusuke. And what a perfect intro, like I can hear myself on the video, so it's like, what a perfect way to introduce who's standing there talking to us. Right. for a shout out at when you get down there. A uh, shout out to uh, Sunny and Sunny Straight Swinging Sidekicks. To Sunny and Sunny Straight Swinging Sidekicks, here's a call out for you guys. Yeah! Comic Con 2011, baby! I'm actually the longest running sci-fi show Someone else is gonna have to sit back in the back So we got one. Uh, that was cool. And this is a really good range, to, shot range, too. Oh, that's not a lot. Ha, ha, ha. 
really great to talk about baseball and keep such a better room to be comics. Um, and uh, let's start by discussing the Yu Yu Hobby Show Blu ray. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of talk loud. <laughs> so uh, the Yu Yu Show Blu-ray release, uh, of course, the uh, the video for the the Blu-ray release is the exact kind of changeover of what they used for the Japanese Blu-ray release. So the video quality is just absolutely crisp and clear, and never looked better. Uh, some of you I see have kind of already bought it, so probably a lot of you already know that. But some of the things you might not know is that from an audio perspective. We actually come back through the entire series, remix the entire thing from the ground up. This is the first time you'll ever hear you Yu Yu show with 5.1 uh, surround sound, so it sounds really great. We got back through the dialogue tracks, and we've actually called a few of the actors back, to, back in. It's 10 years later, uh, they were able to do some just incredible performances. Uh, we changed a few of the names originally, for instance, there's this clown guy in the show called Suzuka in our version, but he's really named Suzuki. You guys know that, right? Mm -hmm. so we actually changed his name back to Suzuki, so any inconsistency from the show uh, in its original uh, version, all of that has been changed so that this is the purest, best, most accurate version of the show you can get. And, uh, it's just absolutely stellar. I've been amazed with the performances uh, that you're seeing. So, there you go. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's actually in 5.3 surround. Like it's, <laughs> you have to have actually three subwoofers in order to <laughs> But don't quote me on that, I may be wrong. And that's how you get the true definition of two of ours, of course. <laughs> you can only hear the third subwoofer. <laughs> and now, uh, just announced yesterday was the new Dragon Ball Super right? <laughs> well, uh, this actually, we've got a video that we can show, but uh, as just kind of a, well, you know what, let's start with that. Can we start with that? We should start with that. Yes. <laughs> start with that. We'll start with that. We're re reading. <laughs> 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 Actually, the Japanese director of Dragon Ball Z came in the States to take a look at what it was that we had done to his show. And uh, when he saw the first episode, he, what his comment was this, this is the way that Dragon Ball Z was supposed to look like to begin with. So he was extraordinary. Japan on their first pass, and so we were excited with that alone, but then also that they gave such a glowing review of it um, from somebody who has really been involved with the show from its, from its beginning. So I think this is truly going to be the, the, the climatic, pedicle release of, of Dragon Ball Z, for sure. And it's being released here before it is in Japan, correct? That's right. Nice. Their version. 
first when we were kind of making this middle version, which was a combination between the, the version you originally saw on the Cartoon Network in 1999 and the, the version of the show that most people didn't even know about because unless they were watching the original Japanese version. But as the years have gone on and Funimation has been making uh, strides and, and re-scripting things, and which each, with each subsequent version of Dragon Ball Z, we've been going back and fixing some of the inconsistencies, and now with uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai, we have the ability to kind of really re-script it to exactly what the Japanese had intended. So, we're getting closer to the point now where the, the games are coming out with a very similar uh, dialogue to their Japanese counterpart. So my job's gotten a lot easier, but don't tell Justin that. <laughs> so, uh, what? John, as a uh, script supervisor, can you talk about any of the changes you've made in the uh, release of this version of the Blu-ray from previous? Uh, this version of the Blu-ray from previous? Uh, no. <laughs> this is uh, this version of Dragon Ball Z for Blu-ray release. It's you know the video is going through a complete renovation, but uh, the the audio work for it really you know John had gone through and done quite a bit the last time through from an audio perspective with some of our previous remasters, and so uh, now that the cast really has all become one from episode one to the end of the show. Uh, it's been remixed with its original Japanese music, uh, but, uh, but a lot of the, the, the audio will be what you're what you're used to having heard before. It's from the yeah, uncut. Yes, previous uncut versions are what's going on right now. You know, Dragon Ball Kai is the one that we're you know rebuilding the scripts from the ground up and going back and uh, you know more of the changes that, that Chris mentioned that we had to make the first time around were you know going back to what the original Japanese had and uh, you know keeping more of the Flavor of you know, the original Japanese. Uh, it's a little, little more grown up, a little less goofy. Um, so, not writing as many jokes into it, I guess, is the you only know, big difference. It's kind of a little more over 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> and then I know everyone here has what they want to see most of the con, but I want to ask the panelists what are you guys looking forward to that you have seen or looking forward to see here at the convention? Uh, well, actually, the thing I wanted to see more than anything else was the uh, the William Shatner panel. Aww. Uh, hosted by Kevin Smith, which I think is right over there. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, <laughs> I want to finally get my stuff in the Hasbro booth. <laughs> I want to actually get onto the convention floor. <laughs> I just got here late, late last night, so anything will be nice. Uh, besides that long line trying to get across the road from <laughs> yeah. the hotel, as I mentioned. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to disappearing close to the end of the convention and trying to, like, just ascending into space so I don't have to deal with the mass exodus of this building at about the 7 o'clock. <laughs> so, uh, I think open up for some questions. Perfect. Uh, there is a microphone there in the middle if everyone wouldn't mind lining up uh, rather than raising hands so that everyone can hear the questions. Please refer to me as master. Master Sanders. Or senpai if you're here. Yes, I'm going to be talking about that. I have my questions for Christopher. Can you please say so when I thousand? No. No. Oh, <laughs> okay, fine. It's over 9,000! Get a new catchphrase, please. Balls are inert. I have a question for all three of you. Um, I, don't, I hope it's not too long or anything, but I would like be interested to know what was your favorite uh, moment performance-wise of both DBZ and the Show? And uh, any character? What? Wait, please rephrase that question. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, for, like, you know, for Dragon Ball Z and the Show for each of you, what was your favorite moment to, you know, as a performance, as a voice actor? Oh, okay. Uh, I felt for me. As a, as a director of Dragon Ball and as an actor in Dragon Ball, my favorite was 
the, the that really epic fight between Vegeta and Goku when Vegeta's Majin Dao. That's my favorite. Uh, I think it was called, wasn't it just called Rivals or something like that? Or Epic yeah. Rivals? Um, the original release? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was called Rivals. And it was such an epic release. Uh, for Yu Yu Hakusho, um, let's see, I really liked a lot of the, the Dork Tournament. Um, <laughs> That was my favorite. Uh, Kubar was awesome for that. He didn't have to do as much, but he was really cool. <laughs> uh, in Dragon Ball Z, I think probably the, what I really enjoyed was uh, the whole Trunks, future Trunks section of the storyline. Um, yeah. At that, at that point in time, I had just started at Funimation, and I, I worked for Chris Savage as his engineer, and I was really I had never, you know, hadn't really heard a lot about Dragon Ball Z before, and so I was super nerding out, and Chris and Tess, I was getting autographs from all of the actors when they would come in for their sessions, and <laughs> all this and that, but so I was probably most geekish during that particular portion of the storyline, but the, the whole future timeline thing I thought was fantastic. And in Yu Yu Hakusho, I've recently been going back, of course, and, and reviewing each and every episode, and the, uh, the whole Saga of the Three Kings section now, Woo! into the story, we've really gone through and, and messed with that quite a bit, so it's probably the most changed out of all of these Blu-ray oh, sets wow. that are coming out, but uh, it's just absolutely stunning, and a lot of the exchange between Ryzen and you scan is really, <laughs> really pretty slick, and uh, so that's, uh, oh, and I guess I could tease that in volume four you'll you'll notice that Hokushin's voice is actually completely different. We've added Michael Tatum to the cast, and oh, so wow. he's just done an incredible job with that character. So that's probably some of my favorite characters. Okay. Woo! Uh, some of my favorite stuff on uh, Yu Yu Hakusho is probably, I guess, the Dark Tournament, uh, when Karama gets to go Yoko for the first time. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was fun to perform, uh, because it was the first time and one of the only times, I guess, anyone really ever looked. I got to perform with my scary voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one ever lets me do that. They, they want me up here all the time. It sounded nice and friendly. But uh, it, was fun to, it was fun to play bad for a little while. Can you do uh, high school girls and yogas for a course? <laughs> Uh, 
Vegeta would pretty much get what he wants everywhere, especially on with customer service representatives. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm gonna stick with him. Or? for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've never done it. De Bure, just to be pink with, with ears and then that's it. And have great records in voice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could be Man A from the Carter Tree. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, not that I don't appreciate everybody, but last year, where's Sean Shamal? Where's Goku? We replaced it with Tien, man. <laughs> He's naked in the recuperation tank right now. <laughs> oh. He's in the hyperbolic. Okay. I was here last year when, like, you were awkwardly doing the bro fist thing, where you kind of like, how often do you get asked for these memes? Mostly Chris, he gets the over 9,000. The balls are in their ass! And yeah. like all those other kinds of things. But I was just wondering, like, uh, did you know that you were going to be like an internet phenomenon when you did that performance the first season? It's over 9,000, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, I absolutely did, because like little, maybe it's a lesser than a fact, but that I wasn't the original voice of that. Like really? that, yeah, that was a different dude. That was Brian Drummond. Uh, so, FYI, whenever you tell me that, it's really awkward. <laughs> really awkward when you ask. It's just like, hey, copy that other guy. <laughs> but then, like, I could either sit here and explain it for 15 minutes, uh, or I'd just do it. <laughs> Get it over with, take the over 9,000 pill and go to bed. <laughs> but yeah, we get. I get asked a lot. Like conventions have changed a lot. I don't want to get too like like too deep at this panel here. <laughs> conventions have changed a lot over the last 12 years. Like there's a lot of uh, regurgitating of, of memes, a lot of talking into people's phones <laughs> than to people. Uh, it's changed a lot. It's it's uh, definitely digital age. So, <laughs> but we won't be forgotten, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I brought the room down. Over 9,000! If I, if I, I, you know, I could probably retire if I got a nickel for each time I've been asked to, to yell spirit gun at people, or... But, uh, but the strangest is, you know, I guess it's being asked to whip out the spirit gun. That just, that seems... Oh. <laughs> well, try having people ask you to sing about the high school girls. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. Um, my question is for actually um, Justin, but um, are you guys going to have like the Dragon Ball turn into Blu-ray like from the beginning to like now? From the like the original the Dragon Ball series? Right. Oh, Dragon Ball series. okay. Well, uh, you know, fingers, fingers crossed. We're hoping to, uh, yeah, but uh, but Dragon Ball Z is obviously the that's the the pinnacle of popularity for the for that universe, and so that will be where it starts. So tentatively, right now we're uh, we're frame by frame through that particular show, and once we get to those three hundred and fifty some odd episodes, those those four incredible people that you saw doing that, <laughs> we'll take a vacation. Uh, when they come back, we'll see where we go from there. So uh, we'll come back and check the sales, and next year we'll see everybody here with DBZ Blu-rays in their hands. <laughs> so uh, we'll find out that time. Fingers are crossed, though. Hope so. If you write Justin a handwritten letter, ask him to maybe have one. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Not just you, but anyone from everybody. <laughs> and, and all of your friends. <laughs> hey, uh, my question is for Chris. Yes. Now, as cool bar, some people say your best work is in that last season, the one where you don't show up. Yeah. But I think your I think your best work. That's not a knock at you. Some I, people would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think your best work is in the Now the sound effects you did. 
Can you talk to us about those from Mokotron? It, it, wait, in what? In Donkey Kong. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm Monty, by the way. We met Ed from Retro. Oh, yeah. What's up, Monty? Like, I didn't ask him. Okay, that's why, the, that's why he was so brave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by the way, I got your email. Sorry. That's <laughs> why he didn't, uh, like, he's pissed. I didn't reply. Um, yeah, where's the reply, man? I think our best work was definitely um, on... Uh, Donkey Kong Country, we were hired by Retro to do some sound effects for that. Um, we had, uh, I think the favorite thing we did for that were these little tiki guys. I don't know if you guys played that, but they were all made out of little beatboxing sounds. So uh, a lot of it was my voice and then process was like, <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for your, your question. And let's talk soon. Uh, as close as you guys are to the Dragon Ball series, what did you guys think of the live-action movie? Oh. No, I, my thoughts about the live-action movie of Dragon Ball Z are, are going to be this. Um, I was very excited that a, an incredibly, a much larger a, a mass audience were introduced to the term Dragon Ball Z. And I think for that, that's the... I've known around the office as someone who can look at the, 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 the positive side of anything. So that, that's what I would say about Dragon Ball Z. John and I went and saw that movie together. An event that I had blocked out of my mind. <laughs> Actually, um, you know, and this doesn't say anything about the movie. But we, I do remember we were sitting in the theater taking bets as to how many people there were going to be in the theater once the movie started. And you were, like, I was in the lead until four people left. Uh, <laughs> and, and you won. Uh, a total of nine. And our party made four. Five other people. To be honest, I was sort of looking forward to the movie. Uh, even when I first heard about it too, because I figured it, it would win either way. It was either going to be really good, and we would love it, or it was going to be really bad, and we'd like to make fun of it. So, <laughs> one of those options may be true. <laughs> and if Hollywood announced the you Rocket Show live action, would you be just as scared, or would you be hopefully excited? You know my answer? <laughs> I think it'd be the same kind of thing. It would. It, it, I think you know. And again, I'm Mr. Positive, Mr. Sunshine here. But it, you know, I, I would say that the Dragon Ball Z the movie came out there, and I'm sure there's probably a lot of folks that didn't. Maybe they didn't like it, but uh, perhaps it, 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 it prompted them maybe to pick up the cartoon or watch it on television because they'd heard of it. So if that happened with Yu Yu Hakusho, it, it would be the same kind of thing. But. Yu Yu Hakusho has a, a different kind of name too. I think people would misunderstand. It's the Yu Yu Hakusho what? <laughs> <laughs> it's the show about you and you, man. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Justin, uh, you typically do the producing and small bit parts in shows. How did you get to be the lead role for Yu Yu Hakusho? And did anybody at Funimation know that you were just going to knock it out of the park like that? I, I don't know about that. I know how I got it was that we went through casting over and over with it and couldn't find anybody that ever, that, and there was like a committee of people casting for the show. And uh, no, no, nobody could really agree on who they wanted for the Yusuke character. And it was at the end of the day that uh, Barry Watson, the producer at the time, asked me to get into the booth and give an audition for it. He was the one who decided to go with me. And uh, I, I ran around a lot, so. Yeah. <laughs> that was woo. So, uh, but did not, you know? I don't. I don't think anybody. Did I get it out the park? Did I? No. So, I, but no. I, I don't think when any. Well, actually, I would say that when anybody, when you're casting a show, of course you think the people that you're casting in the show are perfect for the part. So, I, I, I would guess he did think that. I thought he made a good decision. The true answer is that we were all terrified and we were expecting him to fail. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, he, uh, he proved us all wrong. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, uh, this, this 
for all three of you. And I'm just wondering um, where do you get the inspiration for your for the voices for the characters, or if you have a process or anything like that. Alfred Hitchcock has a great line about this, which is uh, your motivation when an actor asks, what's my motivation for this scene? He would say, a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I think the inspiration for the lines come from the involvement of the show. I mean, when, when you're working on like the Yu Yu Hakusho show, for instance, I mean, there gets to a point in a recording session, I think, where you're just, you're just trying to get to, you know, we're not doing more than four or five takes on each one. Because at, when, at least from my opinion, as a voice actor, I consistently feel like I'm just disappointing. That's, <laughs> I feel like with every time they're like, well, let's try that again. And they're only going to say they're going to try it again if they didn't like the first one. So, <laughs> damn. Again. You're right. So, so I, I don't know. I think the inspiration is trying to please that person sitting out there saying, I need this one. I was actually talking about inspiration for the actual, like the voice uh, accents or inflection. Oh, I don't Like differentiation. Well, <laughs> well, with that, I mean, we're all three of us are in a position where we have the opportunity to study the scripts and watch the episodes before we go into the booth. Whereas most actors who just come in to record for us, they're working on so much stuff. And I, I've, I'm this case when I record on something that I'm not directing. Uh, we don't, we have a chance to watch everything in advance, whereas the uh, actors oftentimes don't, once you clarify that. And uh, so I get a lot of the inspiration from the Japanese, because we're in a lucky situation where, as opposed to some prelay people, we actually get to hear the Japanese say you do what they do, and it's pretty inspiring, and you'd be surprised. Now sometimes you kind of listen to what they're doing and go, okay, I, I think I have a better idea. Um, but most of the time, we're kind of inspired by the original voices. When I'm working on something else, it really has all to do with what does that character look like and what part of my voice can make that sound. I mean, my, uh, because all the voices I did on Dragon Ball really aren't that different. I mean, there's Yamcha and he's here, and then you add Rask to him and he's the same voice. <laughs> and you give him a British accent or whatever. And there's Piccolo, and there's Piccolo down here. And then there's other characters who are like this. I mean, it's just he, how much, how much gravel do you want to add to him? There, there's Yamchi here, and then there's Zong Bong here. So really, it's, you just have, I think that's why we're cast and why we're actors, because you kind of have that ability to look at something and say, that's what that something needs to sound like, or that's how, what that thing needs to act like. I assume the part of TI I was taking over for someone else that was trying to get my voice into to that range uh, that was previously in. Um, you know, in the case of uh, the Fruits Basket, that was one where I listened to the Japanese uh, actor and, and tried to kind of emulate the feel that, that he had. Uh, in, the, in the case of Karama, it was, um, well, I guess Karama in Japan is actually played by a woman. So I'm like, well, okay, well, what can we do where we don't just give Hey, I'm American hero Karama! You know, that kind of thing. It's like, well, we have to do something that sort of acknowledges that. So, was, you know, let me try to figure out how to play up sort of the, the, the mystical and, and I guess almost spiritual aspect of this character and just have him feel a little bit not of this world. Um, so, those are just some of the things, I guess, that were, you know, fell through my mind. Awesome, thank you. I, find it, I do find it really ironic that that one of your earliest roles, like in like Yu Yu Hakusho and Tien was kind of before that, but one of your earliest roles was you playing a part of a man who's voiced by a woman in Japan, whereas your very close relative, uh, Linda Chambers Young, That's right. his mother plays Frieza on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> she did not help him get the job, by the way. He did not help her get the job, by the way. Um, but they, yeah, she voiced a, boy, uh, a role that was voiced by a man in Dragon Ball. That's right. So, uh, I guess it would be weird if I uh, come to the family of genders. <laughs> <laughs>
It would be, but that's cool. You're already in the place. Now's the time. Now's the time right now. <laughs> I just question off the review. I was wondering. If you could be any character in Dragon Ball Z or Yu Yu Hakusho, who would it be and why? What, we're we're getting those characters again? I mean, Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Just. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. For me, Ryzen, because he actually has hair. <laughs> Be shaved off my chest or something. <laughs> <laughs> Too much information. Move on. <laughs> Thank 
you so much. <laughs> so my question is for the three of you. Um, it's concerning Team Four Stars DBZ Bridge series. Uh, how familiar are you guys with that? And if so, can you comment on their work and their voice for addition and slide performance compared to yours? I'm pretty impressed with the with their voice matching. They're pretty. They're, they sound pretty pretty good. How's that? Did I answer wrong? Why are you good. John didn't have the internet. I don't. Yeah. And it's like he gets Wikipedia and pencil. <laughs> Everything that was new footage has a dub to it. Uh, the DVD uh, kind of includes the Japanese uncut subtitled version, but then the English side of it will just include the movie and then all of the new footage sections with the new voices. So I would have loved to go back and see all the great 80 rock, you know, 80s rock style songs. That would have been a hoot, but uh, I didn't get the opportunity this time. Great letters. This is the last question, guys. Sorry, there's a guy waiting. Making a good one. Come on, Luffy. Chris, can you do the Vegeta rap for me? That's not. <laughs> oh, well, uh, not for you, but when she said, and me, too, like, now there's two people, one here. Are you talking about, like, mom, 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 Oh, wow. Wow, this has been a performance day for me. <laughs> Why did Chris up and put in a nickel? <laughs> Watch the monkey dance. <laughs> we'll do it fast enough. We can do today, alright? One to deep. 
Don't go and come back. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my base, putting suckers in fear, making your tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom, explosion. Overpowering over the competition. I tower in record shop when I drop these lyrics, it'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare. You better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest of all the slice and dice competition paying the price. I'm gonna knock you out, mama said knock you out. I'm gonna knock you out, mama said knock you out. Break down the extra game. Woo!